Okay, so we're pointed somewhere close to M33. And so let's bring up Backyard EOS with Astro Tortilla and do plate solving. Now as you move around the sky and do more and more plate solves, your model of the sky will, in the EQ mod will get more and more accurate and your go-tos will get more and more accurate. So you can see here, we're still a little off. This is M31 down here, the core. And so we're just a little bit off, so Astro Tortilla is going to figure that out and put us put that object right in the center of the frame. So now it's solving. Found it. Sink slowly to target. Making an adjustment to the Slow mount. Complete. And now it's going to repeat the process. Take a picture. I can't tell you how much this plate solving changed my view of the hobby. The downside is I don't know how to star hop. I can't find things in the sky. I just haven't learned how because this has made it so easy that I don't need to know how. So you can decide, you know, if you want to learn to star hop or, or, or not, but this is just so nice and so quick to just go accurately immediately to to any point in the sky okay so it's gonna it's checking to see here if we're dead on accurate or not or at least within an arc minute parsing results there it is so we are ready to do some imaging so let's figure out what sub-exposure we need here. So I am going to guess that it's going to be around eight minutes. So I'm not going to do an eight minute exposure to find that out. I'm going to do a 60 second exposure at ISO 12800 because I'm gonna image at 1600 and I know that I'll need to multiply this number times eight because it's three ISO stops away. So I would multiply by 2 to 64, by 2 again to 32, and by 2 again to 1600, which is the same as multiplying by 8. So let's do a preview and see where that histogram puts us. That might be a little overkill because I don't, normally I have a light pollution filter in here and I didn't put that in tonight. But let's see how the histogram comes out. To save time, if you hadn't done your PhD2 calibration, you could be doing that at the same time as you're uh, doing your, your sub-exposure testing. The only thing is, is that, you know, PhD2 is going to be moving the mount around, so your pictures will come out jagged, but it shouldn't really affect the way the histogram looks. But we're not in a huge hurry. Okay, so here's a lot of space on the left-hand side, which is what we want. And we don't have a peak over here. You could argue that the core is saturated, so we might want to back off a little bit. 40 seconds. Now remember that you need uh, darks matching your exposure time, your light time. So that may affect your decision on the sub-exposure sum if you have a big huge dark library of all eight minute subs like I do because normally I'm 
with the light pollution filter, it would be eight minutes, but let's see what happens here. Yeah, that's a little better. There's still some gap here. You're exposing above the sky fog, and I can see some variation here in the core. So that's probably good. So then I would go ahead and set my ISO for 1600, and I believe 8 times 4 would be 320 seconds. 8 times 40. Okay, and then let's look and see where we are in the sky. I don't see the RA lines at the moment. Markings. Equatorial grid on date. That's equivalent to J now. That's what we want. So those got turned off, I think, when, again, if you are if you do F3 and then you start typing madly, I'll do an example here. You know, there I've made the NGC stuff appear and disappear. Um, so if I was typing, you know, if I wanted to type NGC, NGC, all this weird stuff happens in, in Stellarium and what you can do is just type it again because they're all toggles. Anyway, so that's probably how those lines got turned off, but now they're on. So the point is, is that here's the meridian, and we can't cross that with this mount anyway without doing a meridian flip, so there's no point in exposing longer than it's going to take to get to that meridian. So what I do is just kind of eyeball it here. I'm about a quarter of the way from this line so an hour is going to put me here and another hour is going to put me across the meridian so let's say uh, 1.8 1. 1. or something I don't know so see normally I do eight minute subs so I can do um, six of those in an hour, but now I'm doing 320 second subs. So that's 20, that's a little over five minutes. 60 divided by five is 12, but I know it's, what is it like? I usually have like two minutes between. So let's do 60 divided by seven. Do eight, eight times one point eight subs per hour times one point eight hours. I can do fourteen. Okay. Estimate. I'm gonna take fourteen subs. I am gonna put a five second mirror lock. What that does is flip the mirror up, wait five seconds before it takes a picture. You could get in lots of arguments on astronomy boards about whether or not you should you need mirror lock. I've, it can't hurt, and it's just adding to the a little five seconds between exposures. I figure you know help the the sensor cool down a little bit, whatever. And it, I can see at least with this mount, not with my big one, with this mount, I can see the mirror moving in my guiding graphs. So, yes, it probably doesn't matter if you're exposing for 320 seconds or longer that there's, you know, just this momentary glitch, but, but why have that in your guiding graph if you don't need it? So, why have it in your exposure if you don't need it? So anyway, I use a five-second mirror lock. I do not use a pause. Uh, I do not use a delay. So, I'm just going to put target name in 31, no filter, we are all set except for auto guiding. 